Hi everyone, it's Abby. Today I wanted to show you how I made the last piece in my Ever After Historical Princess dress, the Gyarnia or Overdress. This piece is common for 1490s Italian Renaissance, but the ones I've seen usually only have a front closure. I wanted to follow the movie version for this one, so the front is sewn shut and the back is laced up. I hope you enjoy! Let's get started! I started with the bodice pattern for my gamera or underdress, and I traced that onto paper and transferred markings. Next, I check my pictures of the dress, and I start to modify the pattern to match. I am creating a v-neck in the front that overlaps by about an inch and a half, I think. I also have room for the bust darts that I need in the front. There are three. I labeled the patterns and cut them out. I found this fabric on Etsy. It's poly brocade that's meant for upholstery, so it's 110 inches wide, which means I can get a super full skirt out of it. I'm deciding which side I want to use. They are very similar, but I want the right look. I measured the length of the train plus half inch seam allowance on both sides. I think I've got it at 59 inches, which makes a 58 inch train. I fold the entire section over itself and I cut the top. I then measure from the top to get two pieces that are 59 inches by 110 inches. I flip the top fabric so that they're both the same side up and set the skirt pieces aside. Next I need to cut out the bodice pieces. I need to cut these out one at a time so I can match the pattern on the other side. I find a good spot for each, and I pin the pattern pieces in place. I cut out the pieces with a half inch seam allowance. I use a sharpie to mark the edges of the pattern. I cut the lining out of poly cotton I had lying around. I also cut a second set for interlining later. I flip the bodice pieces and line up the pattern so that they are the same and cut the rough shape out. I flip the pattern around and line it up in order to cut it out.
off camera, I marked the other side with Sharpie as well so they matched. I also marked the lining with pencil. I didn't remember to take video of it, but I hand basted the interlining to the inside of the brocade bodice pieces so that it would have a heavier feel. I clipped the corners of the lining pieces. Then I clipped the curves, folded the seam allowance in, and pressed it flat. Then I took my basted fashion layer pieces, clipped corners, curves, folded, and pressed the seam allowance to the inside. I'm going to be hand attaching these, so I need everything flat and crisp before I start. Then I realized that the brocade really likes to fray, so I went back and surged all the bodice edges, and pressed seam allowances flat. Next I pinned the seam allowances down to prepare to hand sew. I measure the length that I need for the boning at the back lacing and cut two pieces of plastic boning. I round the edges with scissors. To start, I pin the corresponding back bodice piece to the matching front bodice piece at the shoulder. This is when I realized I didn't need to cut the corners for the most part. Oops. It still turned out fine though. I start removing the basting stitches where I will be sewing. I then get doubled matching thread and stitch a fairly invisible whip stitch along the outside of the seam. I fold the seam allowances back down and pin in place. I line up the side seams and pin in place, removing the basting from that seam. I then hand whip stitch along that seam, same as I did with the shoulder seam. Now I want to sew down all the seam allowances on the inside. I use a single thread and an invisible whip stitch to anchor it all down.
I haven't sewn down the bottom seam allowance yet because I needed to add the bust starts. I have attached the fronts together with one and a half inches on each side of the V. You can see that I have placed pins for three bust starts on each side. I get doubled thread and hand sew each bust start in place from the inside with a double back stitch. I whip stitch the overlapping front pieces to each other so it becomes one piece. I will be hand stitching the rest of the seam allowance down when I finish the bust starts. I measure and pin the lining in the same spot in the front to make sure it'll fit. Using a double back stitch, I hand stitch the boning channels to each side of the back. I make it slightly bigger than the boning. I hand sew the lining the same way I did to the outer layer. I attach the lining to the inside of the fashion fabric with pins and attach by hand with a whip stitch that doesn't show on the outside. The lining sits slightly inside the seam allowance of the outside, so it won't show. That's the advantage of hand sewing your lining in. I mark my lacing hole placement on the back with pins. I hand bind each lacing hole with regular poly thread. I use an awl to create and widen the hole before hand sewing around the edges. I tried on the bodice part laced up. It fits! On to the skirt. As you can see, I've created one side of the skirt pleating so I could be sure that it would fit. Let's pleat the other side. I measure one inch in and place a pin. I measure three inches from the pin and fold the fabric over to the two and a half inch mark. I pin that pleat in place. I continue pleating the same way along the skirt. There are 17 pleats in this section.
I check with the other side to make sure I have all the same markings and that it lines up correctly. The front section has two 1 inch pleats that I place to match the other side. And I also mark where the front fold will be with a pin. Time to attach the bodice. I place it about a half inch down. The bodice will be whip stitched on, and the skirt still needs the half inch seam allowance though. The center pin markings and the V at the center line up, so I measured it all correctly. I use double thread and a stab double backstitch to attach the bodice to the skirt securely. Then I go back and whip stitch along the same seam to make it double secure. I do not want this falling apart. It is very heavy. I had left a lot of the pleat pins in because I need to press the pleats. I removed the top pins and place a press cloth. I steam press the tops of all the pleats flat. I then remove all the pins and steam press the pleats again. I press the rest of the seam and pleats as I go along. The seam is getting pressed down away from the bodice. I measured about 8 inches down in the back. I wanted to figure out where to start the seam, and I started pinning up the seam. I cut about 3 inches off the front. That's how much was left after pleating. I really didn't need that giant of a fold-over seam in the front. I surged the edges of the front that I just cut so they won't fray. I machine sew the back seam up with about an inch seam allowance. I don't need to worry about frayed edges because it has the selvage. I press the seam flat. I also pressed the front under a half inch at the surged edge and then under again about two and a half inches to have a nice wide facing for the front. I hand whip stitched that up. I hand whip stitch the pleated seam down to the inside of the skirt. This helps everything lay flatter and out of the way.
Now I need to cut the front of the skirt hem to the right height. I lay out the bottom of the skirt inside out. I laid my underdress over the top to see where everything lined up. I marked the center with a pin. I checked my measurements to figure out how much to cut off. I'm cutting about 10 inches off the front part of the skirt. I'm leaving a half inch seam allowance. When I reach the right spot, I angle down and smooth both hemlines together. This is at the side of the skirt and will give me a nice train. I get the brocade out again. I need to cut a hem facing for the skirt. I even up the edge. I measure three inches. This is the same size hem facing that I gave the underdress. I cut two strips out. This is all I'll need. I still have plenty of this fabric left. I'll probably end up making some different sleeves with it at some point. I sew the two strips together, right sides to right sides, with a one inch seam allowance. I add a serged edge to one side of the hem facing. I press the seam and I also press any of the folds out. I press the serged edge to the inside about a half an inch. I line up the seams in the back for the raw edges of the skirt and the hem facing. I pin the hem facing to the skirt hem, right sides to right sides. Sew the hem. I machine sew a half inch seam allowance along the whole bottom of the skirt, all 224 inches of it. I serge along the seam that I just machine stitched. I press the hem facing outwards. I machine understitch along the whole hem facing, about a quarter inch from the edge. This helps the seam lay flatter and looks prettier. I fold the hem facing under and I press the edge of the hem flat. It's time to attach the hem facing. I'm doing this by hand. I use a single matching thread and hand invisible whip stitch the hem facing down.
I just pick up a few threads from the front so it won't show on the other side. It works beautifully. It's finally time to add the gold trim. I have a few different kinds that I found at Joann's. I like this golden white braid for the waist. It's similar to what they used for the movie dress. I have two different widths of the gold trim. I thought that I was going to combine them. I think I actually just end up using the smaller one. I hand sew the gold and white braid onto the waistline. I hand sew the smaller gold trim onto the entire neckline. That's when I found that I had enough of the smaller gold trim for the armholes, so I hand sewed that along both armholes. And there you have it, the completed Gaiornia or overdress. You can see the gaping in the back where the lacing ends. I actually go back in and add two hook and eyes to help that stay closed. Thank you for joining me today as I completed my Ever After Gyronia, which completes the whole historical Disney princess dress that Danielle wears in the movie. I actually got some footage and pictures recently in a really great location of the completed look. It makes me so happy. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the final reveal video coming soon. I'll also show you how I put my hair up in the snood. If you liked this video and want to see more costume and sewing videos, remember to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Happy sewing! <laughs>